Hi everybody, this is Elon from Skin Chakra, the place to purchase excellent quality raw material and to learn how to formulate like a cosmetic chemist. And today we have a beautiful water in oil emulsion with shea butter. This is the emulsion that we are going to share the formulation with you in the blog post, not in the video. I'm linking to a very similar video so that you can see how we make it. This is shea butter, so we cannot go cold process, but we don't go hot process either. The cool thing about this emulsifier and this process is that we um, heat our ingredients up to 40, 45 degrees, so it is not really a hot process. So you can uh, use heat sensitive oils and other ingredients as well. This is a very nice and smooth low viscosity emulsion excellent for the cold weather before we go to the formulation i want to clarify the basic and fundamental differences between an oil in water and a water in oil emulsion this is something you have to understand make it a brain tattoo and if you understand the difference the fundamental differences then you are going to create stable nice and smooth emulsions the difference, the first thing that defines which emulsion you are going to make is the emulsifier. It is not how you blend the ingredients, it is not uh, which phase you add to the other phase, and it is not about the oil phase concentration. It is the emulsifier that dictates which emulsion you are going to make. So with the oil in water and water in oil emulsion, uh, obviously the dispersed phase and the outer phase are vice versa and we are going to show you this with a very simple experiment this is the uh, water in oil emulsion i'm just adding it to the to a little bit of water and this is an oil in water emulsion that we have previously made so we can here easily blend the emulsion with the water it doesn't dissolve and you can see that the uh, water becomes milky and the emulsion disappears in the water it is not complete dissolution but it blends with water when i try to blend the emulsion here with water they don't like each other at all and it doesn't blend and it is quite obvious that this is an, a water in oil emulsion whereas the other one is an oil in water emulsion so what is important for you when you are formulating this shows that there is no way you can measure the ph of a water in oil emulsion when the emulsion is made keep it in mind make it a second brain tattoo when you are working on water in oil emulsions you have to measure and adjust the ph of the water phase before the emulsion is made when the emulsion is made there is no way you can measure and adjust the ph whereas here you can measure and adjust the pH during several stages depending on what ingredients you are using and which emulsion you are making but you can measure and adjust the pH during several stages even when you have the complete finished emulsion you can measure the pH so this is one fundamental difference i'm going to make a second demonstration again with the water in oil and oil in water emulsions and here I'm going to apply a water-based or a glycerin-based colorant and you can see if it blends with the emulsion or not. I'm just adding a few drops of an extract of hibiscus in glycerin and here again we have the oil in water emulsion and the color easily blends with the emulsion. But here, when the outer face is the oil and the inner face is water, I can blend till the end of my life, but the color doesn't blend with the emulsion. It separates. It doesn't want to blend. 
there is another fundamental difference between the water in oil and oil in water emulsions and you need to understand it, make it a brain tattoo if it is necessary in order to make stable emulsions. That is, the oil in water emulsion doesn't like electrolytes usually. They can tolerate, depending on the emulsifier, they can tolerate a little bit of um, electrolytes, but usually they are destabilized. What are electrolytes and what they do in uh, cosmetic formulations? We have a complete video presentation about that and I'm going to link to that. I will not repeat all of the story here. In contrary, a, a water in oil emulsion needs electrolytes for stabilization. It is mandatory, it is necessary, and we have to add it additionally to the formulation, to the water phase, in order to create a stable emulsion. What I mean with electrolyte, it can be sodium chloride, it can be magnesium chloride, it can be magnesium sulfate. Usually bivalent electrolytes such as magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate work better, but if you don't have any of them, then just go with sodium chloride, but for heaven's sake, not the uh, table salt that you purchase from the grocery store. Purchase a pure sodium chloride for cosmetics and for chemical preparations. So this means again, when you come to formulation, this doesn't like electrolytes, this likes and needs electrolytes. This means that here we add a chelator to the water phase when we are making oil in water emulsions. This will help stabilize the formulation, works as an antioxidant, helps um, stabilize the colorants if you are using any plant-based colors, any glycerides, any uh, glycolic extracts with a beautiful color. And this will keep the electrolytes uh, partially at bay and will uh, boost the preservative efficacy. Here, since we are deliberately and intentionally adding an electrolyte, we have to remove and delete the chelator from the formulation. So these are now three basic uh, factors that you have to keep in mind when you are making water in oil emulsions. One, there is no way you can measure the pH of the formulation when the emulsion is made. Bef you have to measure and adjust the pH of the water base before you blend oil and water phases and create the emulsion. Two, you need an electrolyte for stabilization. And three, as a consequence, you need to remove the chelator. Do not use any chelator in a water in oil emulsion. If you keep those in mind, write them, tattoo them in your, on your arm, on your brain. If you keep these facts in mind, you will create outstanding, stable, beautiful, nice and smooth water in oil emulsions. If there are any questions, as always, I'll be there to answer your questions, but I think this basic differences will help you understand why we do what we do in different formulation techniques and now you can go and read the tutorial watch the previous video that i'm going to link to that and create some amazing water and oil emulsions for the winter